Hello, my lovely viewers. Welcome to Beginners Letter Dash Abdullah Suleimana YouTube channel. Before I proceed, give me a second to take my coffee. Thank you for that time giving. And I'll make sure when you also want to go for coffee break, I'll grant you the time. Thank you. Today, our discussion is going to be on information processing. And somebody is asking himself, oh, what is information processing? It's about information and processing. No. Information processing goes beyond the two ways, information and processing. A lot of things comes together to form information processing. So let's digest it in our next slice. But on a click, I will say that information processing is just like when you have your food to eat. A lot of things went on before you have that fufu and you are to eat it. You think of peeling the outer part of the yam that was used to pound the fufu. You think of boiling the yam. You think of pounding the yam. You think of preparing soup and other stuffs before you get your food ready for eating. So let's roll on and we will see what information processing involves. Information processing involves inputs of data, storage of data, processing of data, and producing of output for users. Wow, I've mentioned a couple of things. Input of data is just about entering data onto the computer. So one may ask, what is data? And before I explain that, I will advise that you always visit beginners letter dash Abdullah Sulaimana YouTube channel and you always have some tutorials there to watch. I have a tutorial entitled Components of Computer. It's about the things that you need to know about computer. If you watch that tutorial, you get to know much about data processing. You get to know the process involved in processing of data. Are we together? So, I'll always refer you there. It's there that you can get the right tutorials to solve your needs. So, once you find yourself on YouTube, search beginners letter dash Abdullah Suleimana and you will see a lot of videos. You see the video that best matches your need. You try to watch them. I'll even advise that you all watch all the videos because there's always something new for you as my viewer. I'll always ensure that there is something new that you will learn when you watch my tutorial. And don't always watch and run away. Try to do subscribe. That is the only way you can motivate me to do more for you. Thank you. So let's go back to our lesson. Data. Let's see. Data is something that is in its raw state. Something that you haven't worked on. Something that is not manipulated. It's just raw. Are we together? So we can say our raw materials is data. For instance, if you go to forest and cut down trees, we can say that is data. You can use those trees that you cut to manufacture furniture. You can use some as roofing sheets, in roofing materials, and other stuffs. Are we together? So once you begin to plane them, put saw on them and do other stuffs to be able to come out with your furniture or to be able to come out with your roof material then we say you are processing those materials are we together okay let's go into statistics like when you go to the field to take data from houses Let's say you go to a particular house, you may want to know the number of households 
within that house the number of children in the house how many people are male how many people are female their ages whether they go to school or not how many people are educated and other steps before you'll be able to arrive at a decision on that you first need to ask them and they'll tell you and you write them down so once you ask how many households and they'll tell you two you put down two you are doing what we call inputs of data you are taking records of the house are we together and household we all know household is the number of people who eat from a particular pot so let's say you have a house and the whole house eats from one pot only one person will cook and share the food among the house then we say it's one household but if it's happened that maybe two people will cook this person will share among his family this other person will share among his family but they are all living in the same house we say that the house is having two households away together in that order so supposing you get to know that oh there are two households in the house so you write them down on the sheet of paper you are taking what we call records so that is what we call data you ask their names they will tell you their ages they will tell you and all stuff the number of children they have they will tell you and other stuff all those records you are putting on the sheet of paper is what we call data so as they are telling you i always say you put them on sheet of paper it means that the sheet of paper is a place that you are storing those data so whenever you have it data it means that there must be something in the form of storage units where you can store the data and this can be a paper this can be a laptop this can be a smartphone and other stuff are we together so that is telling us that there must always be storage units and once you input the data it will pass through a storage unit so when you begin to analyze the data to be able to say the house is having two households per the information on the paper or maybe they have 12 children in the house three of them are attending school and other staffs you know that all those information you are giving out are derived from the data you kept on the paper are we together and once you are done with that too that is what we call processing the analysis you are doing on the data that is on the paper is what we call processing so it means that at the time that you are working to get your output the storage unit is also working to provide a platform for you to access whatever information you are working on so it means that the storage units provides temporal storage for whatever information that is under processing are we together so once you are done with your manipulations or your analysis you would like to give reports and before you report you have to reorganize your work onto another paper or if even on the same paper it means that you still have to reanalyze it and you put your results so your results must also be found on a storage device it means that after processing whatever information you have able to come out with should be kept in the storage unit again before you get an output unit and pass it to the users are we together so this explains the process for in information processing it means that you first have to enter data into the system so you provide data into the system after that that data that you entered will be stored on the storage unit which is the temporal storage unit and in computing we call that one the ram random access unit so it will hold the data as you are processing it so the manipulations and the analysis that you are doing to that data is what we call processing after you are done with the processing it will then pass back to 
a storage unit again. And after that, you can connect your output device and have your data as an output. Are we together? Let me give an example. Supposing you have a letter to write, let's say a formal letter. First, you type in the in, in what is in your mind. You type it onto a sheet of paper, or you take a pen and write, or maybe you open word processing documents and you type them inside. You can just decide to type it anyhow. But once you begin to arrange your work, let's say the writer's address, you put it to the right, followed by date, followed by recipient address, followed by salutation, followed by title, followed by body, followed by subscription, and other stuff. Once you begin to arrange your work, make it neat. You are doing what we call processing. Are we together? So the formatting involves what we call processing. Once you are satisfied with the outlook, with how it looks, you may decide to preview it. Once you preview it, it will give you the opportunity to see how it will look like when you print it on the paper. That is why the monitor is classified as an output unit because it helps you to have access It helps you to like have an opportunity to see how the end thing will look like. So it is also classified as an output device. Are we together? So once you are done with that, you can then connect your printer and you print and you have the copy of whatever you have on your screen on a sheet of paper. Are we together? And that sheet of paper becomes what we call your letter. Let me add another example. Supposing Supposing like you have a newsletter. Maybe you want to give story on something. Maybe there was some uh, story that you captured and you want to, let's say, report on that. Once you were at the scene, you may decide to take pictures of what happened. After everything is done, you write your story and after that, maybe you want to insert the pictures to show evidence of what transpired. So once you decide to insert your pictures, we see that you are doing what we call input. You are adding something to the document. Are we together? So you inserting the picture doesn't necessarily mean that it will appear the way you want it. You may insert it and maybe it may look too big or too small or it may appear at a place that you don't want it. So once you begin to resize the picture or to replace it at where you want it, you are doing what we call processing. Are we together? So once you are able to place your picture at where you want it and you arrange your text ready to be printed, then we say you have done what we call processing. So the processing involves the resizing, the scaling, and the repositioning of the picture. That is what we call processing. So after that, you can then print it as your newsletter. Are we together? Or you have your job, you have a job that you want to advertise. So you can decide to write about the job. You can decide to take pictures of your company and you insect it to whatever write-up that you have done. You can decide to format your work, and that is what we call processing. After that, you then print it, and you have what we call uh, your advertisement on a flyer or something like that. Are we together? Okay.
supposing you want to give banking report or report so like you can decide like if you want to know the number of people who made transaction in your bank for a particular day let's say number of those who deposited and the number of those who made withdrawals the total amount of deposit that was made and the total amount of withdrawals that was made the first thing you need to do is to take records of whatever transactions transpired within that day so first you need to number them maybe number one abna abna made deposit let's say hundred thousand are we together number two maybe kojo kojo made a withdrawal maybe two thousand number three Suleimana, Suleimana made, I always make deposit, yes, I don't have to, <laughs> to make withdrawal and run loss. So Suleimana made deposit, let's say, 100 million dollars, are we together? Mm -hmm. So, after, after you are done with everything, you then sit down, you analyze it. So after your analysis, you will be able to, you will be able to see that oh these are the number of people who did transactions with me today maybe they are 15 15 people made transaction with me okay so then you know the number of people who made the transactions you will get to know the number of deposit that was made and you will get to know the amount that you were able to arrive at you will be able to tell the number of withdrawals that was made and you'll be able to tell the amount of withdrawals that was arrived. Are we together? So those analysis forms what we call processing. And at the end, you can be able to give your report on your daily transaction or on what transpired in the bank for that particular day. Are we together? Okay. Budget two, that's the same thing want to give budget on something that means that you first have to list your possible expenditure and you list your possible income after that you compare so the comparison comes what we call processing are we together so that at the end if your expenditure your expected expenditure exceeds your expended income you see that your budget is at deficit and if your expend your expected income is more than your expected expenditure then we say that you have budget surplus are we together so depending on whether your income will be more than your expenditure or your expenditure will be more than your income you get to know the kind of budget you have are we together okay let's add another example <laughs> like weather forecast before a meteorologist can come out to forecast whether it will rain or not he has to do some background work and that one has to do with taking temperature records so he will need to take temperature records wind directions and other stuff and enter them into the system so per the comparisons made you will be able to then predict what is going to happen tomorrow are we together Thank you for being part of this discussion today and I'm very sure that you have benefited a lot. That is always my hope and I'm very grateful that you are with me. I am much happy to help you in my class. Thank you for watching this tutorial and I always advise that you visit beginnersleader-abdullah-suleiman YouTube channel to watch more tutorials. As I promised, to always give you my very best when it comes to ICT tutorials.